Welcome to this special edition of Tech Talk. On the 22nd of September 2017, Apple launched the iPhone 8, presumably the last phone ever from Apple with a home button. On the 3rd of November 2017, the iPhone X was launched to celebrate the 10th anniversary of the original iPhone, which was launched on 29th of June 2007. The iPhone X boasted dual cameras and face scanning, yet the iPhone 8 remained popular. Why? because of a little blue tick. In Australia, the carrier with the best coverage is Telstra. Telstra's blue tick signifies that a mobile device has been thoroughly tested and delivers superior voice coverage in rural and regional areas. Blue tick is a binary status. It is a pass or fail, and no levels of reception are given. The iPhone 8 was given a blue tick. The iPhone 8 Plus was not. The iPhone X was not. Nor was the iPhone XR or the XS or XS Max and the current range of 11, 11 Pro and 11 Pro Max also missed out. Of the nine iPhones released from September 2017 to September 2019, the only one to be given a blue tick was the iPhone 8. So people, particularly in regional areas on the edges of reception, kept buying it. Until they couldn't. In February 2020, the iPhone 8 supply started to dry up. People wanting a blue tick iPhone were left wanting. Jump to 24th of April 2020. Apple launched the iPhone SE second generation. The SE 2 uses the identical body and antenna as the iPhone 8. It uses the same screen and camera as the 8. The chip was upgraded from an A11 Bionic chip to an A13, identical to the chip in the 11 Pro. It was also given dual SIM capabilities. And for the many who were holding out for a blue tick iPhone, the upgrade of the chip was less important than a blue tick. Surely, with the same physical components and an upgraded processor, the newer phone would have at least the same reception. Unfortunately, the iPhone SE 2 was not given a blue tick by Telstra. I was interested in the performance of the iPhone SE 2, so I decided to do some of my own testing. I chose a total of six phones to test. The iPhone 8 and SE 2, along with two of the latest iPhones, the iPhone 11 and the flagship iPhone 11 Pro. I also added two Samsung phones, both of which have blue tick status, the Samsung Galaxy S10 and the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. Both of these phones are 5G capable, but I turned off 5G for the testing. I chose an area for the testing with poor reception and monitored reception for 30 minutes around 2am on a Sunday morning. The first number I was interested in was the RSRP, the reference signal received power. Negative 40 dBm is the best reception, and negative 140 dBm is basically no signal. You can see a time lapse of the screenshots in the video. This graph shows the result of that monitoring. The iPhone SE 2 and then 11 came out on top of this test, despite the fact they are the cheapest models in the range from Apple. The two blue tick Samsungs were followed by the pro version of the iPhone. Don't take too much notice of the iPhone 8 in last place. The combination of this hardware and software does not allow the display of the RSRP in the same way. The second test is not quite as scientific as the RSRP test. A manufacturer can decide what signal level determines the number of bars, and they can be different for different manufacturers or, in fact, different models. Still, it gives an indication. Monitoring over the same 30-minute period yielded similar results. Once again, the SE2 came out on top with the iPhone 11, Samsung S20 Ultra and Samsung S10 all at the same level. Remember that the two Samsungs are blue tick phones. The iPhone 11 Pro was in fifth place and the blue tick iPhone 8 was last. A few bars or an RSRP reading is one thing, but how do the phones compare in real world testing? It is hard to judge the quality of a voice call by signal strength, well, until the call drops out, but it stands to reason that a better quality signal with a handset that has better reception should deliver better internet connectivity. In the first test, I ran only one phone at a time and cycled through all six phones a total of 10 times each. The first graph shows download speeds averaged over those 10 tests. The iPhone 8 came out on top, closely followed by the iPhone 11 Pro. The Samsung set in the middle with the SE2 and the 11 at the bottom. The important part to note with this graph is a small range from top to bottom. The iPhone 8 sat just below 98 megabits per second, while the last place iPhone 11 still averaged a respectable 86 megabits per second. 
Many people have not taken too much notice of upload speeds in the past until they had to start working remotely. When working remotely or participating in a video conference, the upload speed is suddenly of much greater importance. In this test, the Samsung's topped the list, followed by the iPhone 11. All three sat above 23 megabits per second, which again is quite impressive. The SE2 dropped down to 30 megabits per second, followed by the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 11 Pro, which was surprisingly last at only 5 megabits per second. The last graph shows latency, often referred to as ping time, the time it takes for a small packet of data to make a complete round trip. Latency is important in two-way conversations or gaming when a few milliseconds can be the difference between a virtual life and death. In this test, the Samsungs were consistently below 28 milliseconds, while all of the iPhones were from 36 to 40 milliseconds. I then ran the same tests again, but this time I ran all six phones at the same time to better simulate a real-world situation when more mobile traffic would be present. I ran these speed tests seven times for each phone, again in the early hours of the morning, around 2 a.m. through to 5 a.m., to minimise external traffic. In the download test, the non-blue tick iPhone 11 Pro showed a significant advantage over all the other models. It ran an average download speed of 85 megabits per second, an insignificant drop from the individual testing. The iPhone SE 2 was the best of the rest at just under 30 megabits per second. The blue tick phones came in next with the S20 Ultra, the iPhone 8 and the S10, followed by the iPhone 11 at only 15 megabits per second. The upload concurrent test had the iPhone 8 just ahead of the iPhone 11 with the Samsung and SE 2 all in close proximity. The range in these was minimal with 5.5 megabits per second up to 7.5. The surprising result was the iPhone 11 Pro, which once again showed poor upload speeds at just over 1 megabits per second. The latency test once again had the Samsung in front, followed by the iPhone 11 Pro, which somehow improved its time over the individual testing. The iPhones were all in the range from 36 to 41 milliseconds. The original objective of this testing was to see if the iPhone SE second generation would deliver the same reception as the blue tick iPhone 8. In the eight separate tests performed, the score was even between the iPhone SE 2 and the iPhone 8, with four apiece. So it's hard to see any measurable and significant difference in reception between these two phones. With a faster processor and a cheaper price, the SE 2 is a good replacement for the iPhone 8. Furthermore, the testing performed showed that modern smartphones are all capable of high performance, and when choosing a mobile phone, I'd encourage users to consider the entire package rather than just viewing the blue tick status of the phone. This is Matthew Dickerson with a special edition of Tech Talk.